Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Melvin Enoch Howard III, and I just finished my freshman year at Emerson College, a renowned film school, as many would call it. I would say differently, but, you know. Anyways, today I am going to do a tutorial of sorts. Um, actually more so a, an adaption of material. Um, lately I've been getting more and more into the 3D modeling software Blender, trying to figure out its ins and outs, uh, its applications, and just studying every aspect of the modeling and animation process. I've been using a book called Blender for Dummies. Um, it's written by Jason Van Gum Gumster. Gumster. I'm not sure what his how to say his last name, but he has a cool last name and he has a cool book. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, oh yeah, yesterday I made a cannon, just. Just for fun, uh, no, no tutorials, no, it wasn't in the book. I just wanted to make a cannon, but now I'm thinking we'll use this cannon as we go through the rest of the book, and that's also what I need to tell you. I am starting on page 217 of the book in the adding text section because I thought of this idea yesterday to film all of this, so... Maybe I'll get around to the other stuff later. Um, I don't know. I only have like 26 subscribers. Nobody's watching this. Uh, so anything could be said here. Um, but anyways, let's just get started. So let's make a new scene. File. New. General. And we're, we're not going to save this because I didn't make any changes to it. Now uh, let's delete the default cube. And now we're working with text. And so, Mr. Gumster says that over the years, working with text in Blender has come a long, long way. The way you work with text in Blender has quite a few differences from what you might expect of word processing software like LibreOffice or Microsoft Word. I actually use uh, LibreOffice, but I don't know how to pronounce the Lib... I think it's Libra? Lib Libre? I don't know. What you may not expect is that Blender's text objects share quite a few features with these programs. So let's check it out. So these text objects are actually a specialized type of curve object. We went over curves in the la last section. Curves are just like math oriented um, objects. Uh, you can really the application he said you use curves for would be like um logos because you can scale them up to any size because they're based on like uh uh op math operations uh i'm still getting back into the geometry and the algebra so you know forgive me if i'm a little uh, rusty on my math skills so, nearly all of the options he describes for the curves also apply to text because they are, in essence, the same thing. For example, you can quickly bring text objects into the third dimension using the extrude, bevel, and even the bevel object taper object field. So let's add it a text. Uh, let's add in text. Um, so if we go into the, I think it was, was it this? Yes, yes, yes. I think it's geometry. Um, we don't extrude it in the same way. You can extrude uh, like regular mesh objects. You ex you can extrude them in the edit mode, but here you do extrusions. You can do extrusions in the uh, object mode right here. Uh, this is edit mode. You can tab into edit mode by pressing tab in the 3D viewport. So, you can extrude it like this. You can 
wait, let's extrude it. And then we can also bevel it like that. Give it some depth. See, pretty cool. Now you got your own blocky text you can use for like a, a movie or something. For example, you can quickly bring text. Uh, figure 719 shows. Uh, you can't see the figure. Uh, you're not reading the book. But I am doing the exact same thing that the book is saying. Um, oh, yeah. And so, oh, yeah. You can f turn off. See how the top and bottom are filled, like the faces? You can turn those off with these. Or you can add one in the front, and there's none in the back. You get it. You get it. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Come on. Anyways, moving on. Adding text and editing text. You add text by going to add. Uh, I prefer shift A, and then you just add the text in, right? And then a text object appears at the location of the 3D cursor right here. And it defaults to the word text. Um, now let's go to press number seven. That'll take us to the top view, so we don't, so we can see the text right in front. Of, oops, I keep doing that. To edit the text, you tab into edit mode, right? And then after you're in edit mode, the controls feel more like a word processor, and then you can type in words. Uh, I'm gonna type in. Um, uh, uh, let's see, grog. That's a funny word. That's not even a word. Uh, how about um, mumps? I think that's like a disease or something. You got the mumps. Anyways, um, to edit the text, yep. For example, you can't use your mouse cursor to highlight text, but if you press shift plus, what is this, arrow? I think it's arrow, right? Yeah, uh, oh, okay. Shift plus like the left arrow key, you can go through it like that and you can hold it and then it'll yeah so that's pretty cool all right let's highlight that actually shift plus arrow keys and then you can highlight your text right easy aside from just typing there are other ways to add text to your text object if you happen to have a relatively large chunk of text blender's text objects support copy and paste Hmm, how do we do that? Simply highlight the text you want. Remember shift, shift arrow key. And then like any regular program, control C. And then you should be able to control V it right after. Oh, would you look at that? Mumps, mumps. Got a double case of mumps, double mumps. Mumps times two. Then in Blender with your text object in edit mode, paste the text from your system. Copy clipboard. Uh huh. That's really cool actually. No, it's not. You can do it. this is not this is not that amazing. <laughs> if you have a lot of text, like say the credits for an animated short film, ooh, Blender has another handy feature. In the three D viewports header men and menu, uh Let's, I think we have to go back to choose edit paste file upon doing so blender provides you with a file browser that you can use to pick any text file on your hard drive. what does that mean let's figure this out right now so it says in the header of the 3d viewport right we can choose uh, Edit, I don't see edit. Do you see edit? Oh, oh, I'm done. This is the header. This is the header, by the way. I was looking here. This is the header. Choose edit, paste, file. Um, do you see a paste? I don't see a paste. Edit, paste. I don't see a paste. We are not editing this video. It's going up in full. We're figuring everything out together, guys. Okay? Um, if you figure it out before me, um, just skip ahead. 
or um, you know watch me struggle for like 10 hours um, let's see let's see uh, do, you, do you see an edit you know what maybe this is the header maybe I'm just tripping uh, let's go into edit mode um, view Oh, oh, I also forgot to mention. Yeah, I'm dumb. I also forgot to mention. This book uses Blender 2.8, so not everything will be the same. So, yeah. Let's uh let's keep looking. Let's keep Yeah, it's right here. It was in the text. Not in the There's no edit. It's in the text. It's paste file. And then we can, let's just paste it uh, to, let's paste it to, I don't know, script? Where's my script folder? Uh, I don't think it's in here. Let's, let's paste it to the, <laughs> the importante folder. It says it failed to open. Oh well. I guess it's only if you have a lot of text. We'll figure that out later. We'll come back to that. This that's a we'll come back to this part. Controlling text appearance. Whether you're adding text by typing or pulling from a text file, the default look of Blender's text object is not what you're probably gonna want to use. Yeah, it looks kinda dull mumps mumps needs a little more flamboyance if you catch my drift um more often than not you're going to want to use a custom font with customized spacing and placement of the letters yeah obviously the section covers how to make your text look like really nice hmm. okay let's let's see changing fonts changing fonts uh we're going to want to go to the object data tab uh, oh wait. Um, oh yeah, we're, we're already there. Ooh, I'm dumb. So let's see. Uh, I I would like let's go let's go out of edit mode and I want them I want the text to be filled in for now because I want it to look cool. Yeah, looks cooler now. Um. You may expect to see a drop down menu that lists all the fonts and stuff. Okay, let's. Here we go. We got the fonts. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Let's play around with some fonts, guys. Regular. Hmm. Uh, how do I change it exactly? Hmm. Do I have to, like. Oh, I think I need, like, a file. Okay. I'm back. And I got fonts. I got fonts. Um, let's try. Uh, let's try some Arabic. And Blender cannot. No. Okay. Blender cannot do Arabic. Let's try. Let's try um, emojis. Not even rendering it. That's not okay. I want something that looks like. Interesting. <clears throat> what about this one? Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, that, that looks pretty cool. Mumps, mumps. I like this. I wanted the. I I downloaded a spooky one. Let's let's check. Let's see if. Um, don't look at those files in the corner. Um, those aren't. Those aren't real. Um, I don't know where I put it. Um, you know, and let's we'll we'll be fine with the the one we have now. So anyway, let me find my highlighter. Anyway, we are on changing fonts. Enable, you know, you just press that thing in the corner here. Open font file. You find the file, and there you go. You can change your font. And this oh. 
on the next page it says here are the standard places you can find fonts on windows mac and linux so Lin windows you can find it on um windows on the c drive fonts <laughs> crazy isn't it uh, mac you can find in the system library fonts or library fonts okay and then linux uh user share fonts and so after you load a font it's available for you to use in that specific blend file whenever you want all right cool so fonts and blenders are data blocks uh like data blocks how do i explain data blocks i'm not going to explain data blocks right now because I cannot remember how exactly to explain it. But I do know how it works. I'm just not going to tell you. <laughs> we'll get back to it. That means if they're not actively used in their, in your scene, their data blocks. If they are not actively used in your scene, they won't be saved to your .blend file. <clears throat> and when you reopen your file in any unused fonts... Any unused fonts will need to be reloaded. So if you load a lot of fonts and want to have them available the next time you open, I would recommend that you give your font data block a fake user by clicking the shield icon to the right of the data block. Oh, so this, okay, so if you don't, interesting. To the right of the data. Hmm. What's this? Okay. Save this data block even if it has no users. Okay. So now when you go when you come back in then you'll have this font to use even if you don't actually like use it in this this go around. So just remember that. I'm guessing that'll be helpful later on. Now you think after the font you have the font loaded you should be good to go? Nope. Blender's method of handling bold and italic in text is also kind of unique. You actually load a separate font file for each one. Hence the four separate font data blocks. Regular, bold, italic, and bold italic over here. Typically you use these data blocks to to load the bold and italic versions of the font file you choose in the regular data block. However, that's not a hard and fast requirement. He uses interesting terms. I've never heard anybody say hard and fast. You can actually use an entirely different font altogether. Although the ability to choose different fonts in the bold and italic data blocks is perhaps a mild abuse of the terms. That ability does provide a pretty handy workaround. Different fonts in the bold and italic data blocks. Interesting. Technically speaking, Blender doesn't allow you to arbitrarily change fonts in the middle of a text object. Hmm. However, using the different data blocks, different font data blocks, you can get around that problem by making your bold or italic font the other fonts you want to use. Choosing a font file of any style of font is pretty straightforward. Hmm. So, now we're going to be choosing a font file for any style of font. Okay, let's, let's see. In the font panel of your text object's data properties, left click the load button on the font data block you want to change. Uh, I guess we'll change bold. By default, the built-in font B font is chosen for all four data blocks. Oh wait, this is this is what we just did. Oh, oh wait wait. So so I'll say I choose a different font for like um let's choose um why do they all look the same? These all look the same. <laughs> Let's choose, let's, uh, sure, let's do this one. So, if I, from edit mode, highlight the text you want to change, and then toggle bold. 
What's this? Oh, let's see. Okay, let's go into edit mode and then shift. And then I can toggle bold and hmm. why is it not changing? What the fuck? Why, why do I, why, why is it on the 3D cursor? Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Maybe I have to select the whole thing? Italic, underline, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's not working. <laughs> Highlight the text you want to change. Toggle bold. Press control B. Let's try control B. Uh, what? Well, I, I just did that though. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, but didn't I just do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I could have sworn I just did that. See, it's not working. I had to do it twice. Uh, interesting. Well. I guess your solution for this is to just press Control B if you want it bold. Um, let's try italic. Yeah, I don't know. Let's, I think I do. I have to do it from the 3D viewport. Anyways, we'll just keep it normal for now. Keep it normal. A regular. You may find that while you're typing, you need certain special characters like the copyright symbol or the upside down question mark for sentences written in Spanish. Hmm. Interesting. If the special character is common, you may find it in edit special characters. Let, uh, let's go to see. This is why you don't use books from years ago. Blender 2.8 to work with blender what is this where are we on 3.6 i don't even i don't even know to be honest <laughs> anyways so special characters we have ooh, oh my god it's a circle that's not a circle i wonder if it say we render it will it come out as a circle okay let, you know let's try that let's add a oh let's add a yeah so let's add a circle and then let's render it and oh, i can't see it the camera's not in the okay let's control alt zero control alt zero moves the camera to the position of your um 3d viewport is looking in um so let's move this on the x-axis Okay, let's get out the camera right now. I'm not trying to look inside the camera. Um, and then let's look. And no, it still shows up as a question mark. I wonder why. <laughs> maybe maybe the circle's not in this font. You know, let's take off the font. Let's not deal with the font right now. <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. But oh, and now the circle's gone. Let's add a circle, and you can't add a circle. Anyways, let's move on. You know how to add special characters now. You can in okay, yeah. And then there's like hotkeys for special characters you can do with like the numpad and whatnot. You can find that out on your own. I'm not doing all that. Some fonts. Don't always include gl glyphs for every special character. Po okay, yeah, that's what we just learned. Uh, if you don't see a special character appear in Blender, you may need to try a different font. Okay, that's that's what that's the problem we're running into. Okay, another unique feature that Blender text objects have is the ability to use any other object as a font character. Whoa, excuse me. So if you want to use Suzanne the monkey. Every time the uppercase S character is used, you can actually do that. If you want to model letters with metaball objects, 
and spell something with them. I can figure, oh wow, you can do that. Hmm, so you can make your own fonts within the program and then use them as text. Okay, that's really cool actually. With your text object selected, have a look, oh. A look in object data properties with the font, font panel. There's a transform sub panel. Okay, let's let's do this right now. Let's do this right now, because this might be important later. You never know when you're gonna use an object. Let's yeah. So let's add the monkey Suzanne in. Now you can do this by going down here and adding then the monkey. Let's move her right here so she's not in the way. Um, you know maybe maybe we'll. We'll take this on the x-axis. Uh, to rotate, you press R, and you can rotate it on the x-axis by pressing X, and then you can do it, snap it to like 90 deg degrees by just typing in 90, and then enter. And there you go. Now let's move it down here. Oh, look at this. Uh, and so we should be able to go to Apparently, we should be able to go to our object, object data properties, and then, then there should be a font panel here. I am not seeing one. Maybe, maybe that's not in um, this version of Blender. Maybe you can add a custom property. You know what? You know what? I don't think I see it. Oh, maybe maybe we have to be. Oh wait, you know what? We're not on this. You know what? Maybe let's go into here. Okay, yeah, text object. Okay, transform sub panel. Oh, where's the transform? You see, let's close all of these. There should be a transform sub panel in this. Ah, uh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, oh, here we go. Object font. Uh, should we just type in Suzanne's name? Oh, you can just change the name of the font family. I'm on. Let's name it Monkey monkey and then you can choose any name you like for example you can use, okay model a character you want to use name this object with the family name plus the character will represent so so that means we're going to name our the monkey Suzanne we're gonna name her oh, what did I name it oopsie I think it was I spell I did capital yes I did I did so monkey and then we add the uh, letter it will be so monkey dot u I think that works and so. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, wait, we have to end it with a period, apparently. So, come here and end that with a period, right? And then, hmm. I think we can use this and I drop. I uh, don't think that worked. If you model an uppercase W, call it metal letter dot W A. Uppercase W would be metal letter. This is hard actually to understand what he's saying. 
Name the object with the family name plus the character it will represent. Select your text object and enable vertex in instances from object prop instancing instance instancing. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, I don't see an instancing tab. Object properties. Oh, that's. That's material properties. That's constraint properties. Physics properties. That's world properties. Collection properties. Object properties. Instancing. Vertices. Oh, would you look at that? Hmm, <laughs> okay. Seems we've gotten it down. Um, I think we can scale this down though. Oh, maybe maybe that just that's just not how it works well you can see we're getting somewhere with this wait is it like the whole letter hmm so what happens if we change this it's nothing um what, what was our word mumps m u M P. Uh, okay, let's. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's just a little bit difficult to figure out. M. Well, we're going somewhere with this. One detail to note here is that your meta letters don't merge into each other like you might expect them to. This is a shortcoming within Blender. Okay. Looking back at the object data tab of the properties editor. Okay. Let's, let's honestly, let's get rid of this. This, this didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, but also our text is gone now. What the hell happened to our text? Hmm. Uh, it seems our text is gone. You know what? Let's just add in new text. Oh, you know what happened? Neither do I. <laughs> Where'd the text go? Oh, you know why? It's using that as a... Let's, um... Uh, I guess we'll turn off this vertices thing. And it's still okay. There we go. We're back. We're back. We're back to business. Let's type in mumps again. Okay. We're back to where we started. Looking back at the object data tab, okay. We have more handy settings in the transform tab. Oh, I hate this tab. So, size allows you to adjust the font scale. Whoa, 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 oops, that's sheer. Oopsie. Um, let's put that back at zero. Um, let's press shift. Shift allows you to more easily like, like ease in the numbers while you're, see what I'm doing here. And it's still not reaching zero, so I'm just gonna type it in. So size, whoop. look at how big that gets. Oh my God, look at that, it's crazy. So we have we have a size modifier. And the shear, which you just saw me do on accident, uh, it's, it's kind of a way to fake italics. I think that's really all it's for. I'm not sure if it's for anything else. Kind of cool, I guess. It's not really that cool though. Does one thing and does it well. Then we have object font. You just saw that. You can define Blender objects as fonts. Then we have text on curve. Oh, you know what I think happened with the font thing. You see, I think we typed two full like 
because we type mumps twice, right? And so the monkey, uh, Suzanne, her head was um, like her head took the whole word mumps instead of just the letter U. So there was two of her heads because there was two uh, instances of mumps in the sentence. So there you go. Problem solving at its finest. Then we have text on curve. If you need your text to flow along the length of a curve object. Um, I explained curves earlier. Like um, you can, it's almost like drawing math into Blender. Um, let me let me add a curve right now. Oops, let's, we're still in edit mode. Let's get out of edit mode and let's add, oh, Oops, I turned on the magnet. Um, let's jump up here for a second. And let's add a curve. Let's add a Bezier curve. Let's move it over here. So we go into edit mode and curve. Look at this. So the curve has two control points. So these are the control. Oops. Why would I hide that? Why would I hide that? So we have two control points, right? These, like... This is, these are, this is what your curve is like attached to structured from. This is how you change the structure of your curve, right? And then each on every control point is two handles, which allows you to like, you know, kind of twist and turn and change it into the shape you want it to, um, very malleable in that way. Um, unlike a regular um, vertice or I mean mesh so I'm guessing what this means in relation to text is that let's move up to our text uh, actually actually let's delete the, let's delete this curve because I don't want it on the line so if you need your object to follow the length of a curve, use this data block field to choose that particular curve object. Choose your curve object from this field or click the eyedropper icon to use as an eyedropper. Okay, let's go back to where. So we are right. This is our text on curve. Oh, so see why <laughs> I did that. I was telling the, I was trying to tell the, the text to move along the <laughs> yeah that's not what we want that's not what we want choose your curve object from this field or click the eyedropper icon to use okay so you know what let's try this out right now um you know what? let's go back and rotate our mumps back 90 degrees so we can oopsie Let's, so let's rotate mumps back 90 degrees and then let's add a let's add a bezier curve tap into edit mode um, I want it to follow along like a kind of like a maybe like a like a rainbow the shape of a rainbow so we can extrude that from here and then, yeah. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, oopsie, I tried to make a new segment. And then, um, see if we can turn this this way, like the handle, yeah. And then we move that in, oh, let's move it right there. And then now we can get out of here, select that. And then we can choose this curve and now look at that crazy right and then I think if I'm not mistaken I should be able to also change it from oh my god look at that look at that isn't that crazy so easy but it's so cool to look at okay and now you got mumps on a rainbow curve at least that's what I like to think of it. And you keep changing it like that. Ain't that, ain't that cool? That's a cool thing. 
Now, okay. Next we have underline position. Adjust this value to control the position of the underline. So, oh, I don't, oh, oh, we're in the, tr we're supposed to be in the, oops, let's get out of the curve. Let's transform underline position. And where's the underline? You see an underline? I don't. This value has a range from negative 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. Uh, oh, to enable your underline, you just press Control U while you're on the. Uh, I don't see an underline. Oh, you have to highlight the text. Give me one second. So, go back like this. Oops, I added an extra S. So, let's go back like this. And mm, Control U. Oh, would you look at that? That's not an underline, that's an overline. But, uh, oh, oh, look at that. Now we just change the underlying position. Bada boom. There you go. Now, um, why do I keep selecting the 3D cursor? It's because, okay, hold on. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, you know what? Anyways. We're done with this. We're done with this. Why do I keep selecting the 3D cursor? Okay, we're done. Oops, I accidentally added that. So we've added an, an underline. It's not connecting, but we've added an underline. Um, get rid of that. Let's just look at that. Look at that beautiful underline. Um, let's disable the camera because it's getting in my way. You can disable stuff here. I mean, not disable it, but Make it invisible. Oh, look at that. That's very pretty, actually. And then we have the underlying thickness. Ooh, let's go back. We already know what this does. We put it on a pedestal. Mumps. 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 Very cool. Very cool. And then small cap scale. This is the small caps toggle. Where's the small tap caps toggle? You have to enable that first. Let's see, formatting buttons. I don't. Hmm. I wish. I wish this book would. I wish this book would tell me more about where things are. Because it says enable the, f the small caps toggle that's among the other formatting buttons in the font panel. Okay, it is there <laughs> somewhere. Where is that? Small caps toggle. You see a small caps? It says font panel. Controls how small your capital letters are. Yeah, I don't. It's not working. Is this fill caps? You know what? It doesn't matter right now. We'll figure that out later. And then we have adjusting paragraph styles. The paragraph panel consists of two sub panels, alignment and spacing. So let's go into our paragraph panel. Look at this. Alignment and spacing down here. Um, horizontal and vertical. And then we have spacing, character spacing, word spacing, line spacing. <clears throat> so, well, we could do like some Star Wars type of text, like the text crawl. Um, so left aligns the text to the left, obviously. It's, you know, this is just like, uh, let's look at this vertical thing. Because you already know what all this stuff does. Um, so, in, in addition to horizontal alignment options, Blender offers you a vertical alignment options. Or especially we're thinking about if you have multiple lines of text. So top baseline is the default alignment. The baseline of text is the line upon which the text is written. As an example, the lowercase letter G goes below the baseline. G 
Whereas the uppercase G sits upon it. Okay. Okay, you get it? Yeah. So let's let's play around with this actually. So top baseline. That's not working. <laughs> Middle baseline. Oh, oh, okay. I see what's going on here. So, oh, oh, I don't know what bottom baseline means. Kind of looks like they're all. It's kind of weird. Oh, what? What the hell? Interesting. Oh, 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 I see what's happening. It's moving the baseline, I believe. The op- no, 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 no. The object's origin, see this? This is the origin of the text object, the red, the orange dot. The origin acts as the top of the text block. All text flows beneath it. Interesting, interesting. And then center, um, I'm guessing that's the middle. Uh, if you choose the center, the origin of your object is at the vertical center of your block. Oh, you see that? See that? A lot of this is based around the origin. Okay. It's not that hard. All right, and then in the spacing subpanel, customize the amount of spacing between characters. Whoop. Oh my god. Crazy, isn't it? And word spacing, what's this do? I don't want to mess with this one. Word spacing globally defines the space between words in your text. Oh, so if we add. So let's tap into edit mode. Um, let's add the uh, humidifier. Did I spell humidifier right? I did. Now let's. Oh my god. That's crazy, isn't it? It is. And then we have line spacing. Jude. Uh, Hannibal. See? You get it. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's really not that hard. And then the offset values offset the text object from its default position. So, yeah. You got it. You guys got it. If I get it, then you probably get it too. <laughs> uh, if you're familiar with typography, you may notice two things right off the bat. The terms used here are not the standard type. Okay, we're not typographists, any of us. So, we're going to move on to the next chapter. Working with text boxes. Both the flush and the justify horizontal alignment options in the paragraph panel require the use of something called text boxes. Excuse me, what are you talking about? Okay, let's let's look in this text boxes panel. Um, okay. Um, there we go. Back to business. Working with text boxes. Both the flush and justify horizontal alignments the use of something called text boxes. The left, center, and right align options all work relative to location. If you want to align your object, your text to both the left and right side, you need more than one reference point. The text boxes are ways of providing these, those reference points. So, to work with text boxes, you can use text boxes panel. You use the text boxes panel. By default, Blender gives you a single text box but all its dimensions are zeroed out. That means the text box dynamically adjusts to whatever you type in the text box. Okay. So let's play around with this. Overflow, this is the default setting. The width of your text box is respected. But if you have text that runs longer than the height of your text box, that text will run past or overflow the borders of your text. Okay. So. Mm. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out. Let's add a text box, I guess. Oh, oh, we can add two. This is interesting. The offset X and Y fields determine where the top left corner of the text box is located. I see, I see, I see. As you adjust these values while in edit mode, you can you should see a dashed rectangle in the 3D viewport. Yeah, I see it. So uh, 
No, I see I see them for the size. Uh is that the text box? Do you see this? I think that's a text box. If that's the text box, then why is the M going through it? I think oh uh, I think I think I think I kinda get it now. Somewhat. Somewhat. I'm getting there. Uh, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> cool thing about text boxes is that you can actually define more than one and place them arbitrarily in your scene. Add a text box by left clicking the add text box button in the text boxes panel. Okay, using multiple text boxes is an excellent way to get very fine control over the placement of your text. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's not that hard. So you can deform text with a curve, another really powerful thing. Okay, so yeah, we already saw the, the curve thing. We don't need to go over that. Y'all already saw that. And you can convert curves and, mes and meshes. Oh, you can convert two curves. Okay, um, let's, let's try that. Of course, although Blender's uh, text objects are powerful, curves and mes meshes do some things better. Fortunately, you don't have to. Okay, so we can go here to object. And then we can convert, where is the convert button? Convert to curve. Oh my God, look at it, it's a curve now. Or we can convert to a mesh. And now we can, watch this, watch this guys. This is gonna be crazy. I can go into edit mode, look at all this. And I can just start, um, yeah, it's crazy because this is, this is gonna be a hell to work with as a mesh. But uh, let's just take this part, for example. Watch this. That's crazy, right? And now we can tab out. That's insane. So, yeah. That's about it for text. I know I didn't explain it very well, but now I have a strong grasp on it, and I hope you do too. Um, the next part is probably gonna be a lot more fun. I think I'm gonna include the canon in the next part. Um, and it's about, I'm pretty sure it's about um, blender materials and like texturing and whatnot. I think we're getting to the texturing part. This next chapter seems pretty long though. I think it, we're on page 230 right now. And it goes all the way up until page 267. So that's like, 40 pages I believe uh, so this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a fun one I think I think there's gonna be a lot to do in this one and I think it'll, I'll be a lot more easier to follow next time around but it'll probably be a longer video um, that's all I have to say I hope you have a great day um, hope you liked my video and I'll see you on the next one